Divine Source, Great Spirit, we're so grateful to be called here today, grateful for this container, for communion, for sharing your light and your love and your grace. We're here for the healing and we're here to receive the messages from you as our teacher, as our guide, showing us where the healing is to be found and showing us the messages that will be most helpful. And so it is. Welcome to Talking Spirit. My name is Yuta, and I'm back with my friend Elizabeth. Greetings, everyone. As always, we're coming together in a prayer to see what the Spirit has to say uh, through each of us. And I think we had sort of floated three different topics at one point or another. And it feels like um, the one that is most present and possibly also the most sensitive and rich at this time, not only for us, but maybe for whoever feels guided to listen to us, is this idea of throwing the teacher into the fire, throwing the teachings into the fire on our spiritual journeys. And I feel like it's probably a topic that most people can relate to in one way or another, because yeah, we all seem to, I think most of us seem to get on this journey through some spiritual teaching, whether it's like for me and to a certain degree, um, Elizabeth as well, it's a course in miracles but it could be anything you know teachings from buddhism taoism other sort of religious teachings or new age ideas whatever it might be any of the spiritual paths and so it seems like a certain teaching kind of throws us into this path and is a guide for us and sometimes it seems like it also comes along with a teacher that seems very helpful for us and yeah that seems to just usher us along this path at certain times or throughout the whole thing and I think also for a lot of people um, I'm definitely speaking for myself for me I've had to realize when it was time to let things go it was time to let teachings go it was time to let teachers go and really fully plant my feet onto my path just with the spirit in my mind with this inner teacher in my mind and they were always some of the most healing times in my life because I really um, had to come to terms with sort of being thrown off the cliff <laughs> with the possibility of nothing catching me on the bottom and so it really just threw me into this deep prayer in my own mind with the spirit to see how I was to operate. So, yeah, here we are. The last few days I was having a, an image come from when I was in kindergarten. And I think it was maybe the first day of kindergarten. And it was playtime. It was after nap time, so we all had our shoes off. And we had to put our mats away and then go get our shoes on and go out to the playground. And it took me whatever time to get out there. Almost all the kids were already on the playground, and I found myself with another classmate who was sitting there crying. And I somehow was able to say, what's going on? And it was that he or she didn't know how to tie their shoes. And I did. And so I was able to show this kid how to make the rabbit ears and wrap them around. And it was such an amazing contribution to this kid in that moment. You know, we're meant to pass on the gifts that we've been taught. We're meant to be in service to our fellows. And the spirit was just showing me that last couple days and and I remember a feeling of 
accomplishment, but I also had a real feeling of like, boy, I know what that feels like. You know, everybody's run off to the playground and you're still here wondering how to get your shoes on. You know, I mean, I, I very much felt out of my depths all through my life. And, you know, it's just this lovely symbol of the spirit saying, please use whatever you seem to have learned and please use your experiences and please let me work through you to help yourself and your fellows. And so this idea of teachers and teachings, we're always a student and a teacher at the same time, as far as I've been taught it. I learned that day about giving back to somebody. I learned that day about not rushing to the playground to take care of my own desire to go have fun. You know, I was shown something. I was a student and I was helping this kid as a teacher. And the spirit's constantly reminding me of that. And it's been throughout my whole life, as would be the case for all of us. But I don't always see it clearly. I don't always have that awareness. So I'm grateful that I have the teacher active in my mind uh, to help me to see my way through. And this idea of throwing teachings and a teacher into the fire literally came onto my journey in this idea of Peruvian shamanism. And it came, I think maybe in like, you'd come for a group healing and practice and a week long thing and learn tools and techniques and do different personal healing. And then you'd go off for however long before your next module. And I think it was in the fourth module or at least the third. And we were invited to take a look, take inventory. Who are your teachers, parents, siblings, actual teachers in schools, you know, uh, a sickness, a cancer or whatever, what had taught you, what had informed you, good, bad, right, wrong. And we had a certain way that we did ceremony to throw them all in the fire. And it was really hard to do that first time. I had already done a lot of inventory work. I'd already done a lot of personal healing and looking at my mind, but there's something for me in the mind around relationships and the idea of people uh, that I thought I would hurt them. You know, if I threw them in the fire, I thought I'd literally hurt them, energetically hurt them, and and that they would know I was throwing them in the fire. You know, I had a lot of kind of superstition around it. I had a lot of hard feelings around it, and it was painful. But as you said, Yuta, it was one of the deepest healing journeys I've been on, and it's something I'm invited to do all the time. You know, if we're not letting go of these ideas of important figures in our lives or important teachings in our lives, we can stagnate <clears throat> and the spirit's always inviting us into expansion. So for me, um, yeah, I just had to face a lot of worries and fears, but the thing I loved about the container I was in at that time was it was ceremony. So we had our prayers like spirit, you know, my prayer at that time was like, please don't let anything I do hurt anybody. Please mm. let this be transformed into love please don't you know don't let this harm you know my path or whatever you know I had a lot of like please don't let me hurt anybody deep in my heart and um and because it was ceremony it was a sacred container where I felt the presence of spirit and I knew my prayers for my own healing were going to be transmuted into gifts and blessings for others that in my letting go of ideas and relationships and thought forms, you know, about teacher, teachers, teachings, you know, that it was going to uh, be food for the whole before this journey. Today, I was guided to pick two extra cards and it was a medicine wheel and it was corn. And it's this idea of like, we'll all be fed. <laughs> we'll all be fed and nourished if we do what the spirit guides us to do. And that's like a teaching out there in lots of different ways. And, and I saw that to be true for myself that if I did my own inner personal work and my spiritual work with the spirit, the way the spirit wanted me to do it, everybody was going to be given an opportunity for what was right for them. And I've had a lot of teachers, unlike you, as you said, Yuta, my path has taken me to lots of different arenas 
lots of different seeming teachings and containers. My mind needed that for whatever reason. Part of it, a big piece of it that's been very important has been the course. Um, so, but I needed to see myself in all these different places and all these different teachers and in all these different teachings. For me, spirit needed to keep giving me the message of it's a universal healing. It's a universal teaching. You know, it doesn't matter the language because we're going beyond the language, Elizabeth. So let me just show it to you in a million different ways. You know, I needed that. So for me, I've done a lot of throwing teachers and teachings into the fire and they've been done those ceremonies with reverence in my heart and the most amazing gratitude for each and every teacher, whether it was a boyfriend, whether it was a teacher that taught me how to think differently, whether it was a specific teaching from a path about how to wake up, you know, it's just, it's been such a rich journey and such a blessing. And I'm so grateful for all these different perspectives that have come across my path. So that's what comes up for me. Yeah. You know, just in relation to this idea of teachers and teachings, even looking back, like there were times where in my experimentation, it felt like I needed to have a backdrop of um, having people around me that were seemingly more clear than me. It, you know, in terms of hearing the spirit, it seemed like they had a much stronger foundation for for connecting and, and listening to the guidance. And it was beyond helpful for me to have those symbols around me and and then you know kind of being led on this adventure of further experimentation where it seems like I no longer have those symbols really to call on um I mean I could but it doesn't at this point feel like that's that's the way to go for me and just yeah like letting it be an ex experiment and seeing what really happens like what's what's transforming inside myself now that I seem to be more on my own and I kept looking to the oracle cards that I pulled before we came on this um, meeting and one of them is um a card there's a woman on the card and if you look really closely she has this this vessel <laughs> that she's holding sort of a little bit under her cloak and um it's meant to represent the holy grail and i think you know in talking about allowing these symbols of teachings that have been helpful and teachers that have been helpful and allowing those kind of symbols to drop a little bit in our minds I think we for myself I've learned to really recognize that I have this holy grail inside <laughs> in my mind that um, nothing can touch and it's such a strengthening experience and like yeah it's just made me realize that I am eternally grateful for the teachers that have come into my life whenever and like you said Elizabeth whether it was relationships or seemingly actual teachers doesn't really matter so grateful for those symbols and also just as grateful for recognizing when those symbols were no longer helpful and they were actually in myself not because they're doing anything but in myself they were preventing me from because of how I was using them they were preventing me from really recognizing that I I have access to the spirit and I am on my own journey with the spirit and whatever that looks like and however the spirit wants to use me and speak through me or move through me or don't do anything <laughs> through me that's um that's the most powerful place I can actually take in terms of my own healing and also like you said Elizabeth also the best place to take in terms of the healing of the whole mind so yeah I think I'm just sitting in this gratitude of the whole process and you know when I 
I think the one time that I can go back to where I actually almost like viscerally felt I had somebody on a pedestal, a teacher that I was immensely grateful for and, you know, cherished and still cherish and I'm still grateful for. But when I could see that I had placed them on this pedestal that was actually painful to myself, like that was a really, really deep and scary and upsetting and, you know, lots of tears kind of moment because what happens if I take them off that pedestal? <laughs> and, you know, is that right? Like, is that is that reverent? Like you said, Elizabeth, like, is there reverence in throwing teachers into the fire or taking them off the pedestal? And it can almost feel like a rebellion um, when you're not looking at it properly or, you know, when you're not looking at it with this perspective from the spirit. Um, so it can be pretty unsettling, but what I can say, you know, looking back at it now, it was one of the most helpful and powerful experiences on this whole journey so far. <laughs> so yeah, that, those were some of the things that just kind of sparkled up. I mean, you know, the idea of going back to being a baby and depending on who raises you, you know, your parents generally are like your first gods, <laughs> goddesses, you know, they become that authority figure in the mind. And depending on the dynamics, they may continue to hold that kind of position. Um, you know, both of my parents were incredibly strong figures in my mind and in my life. And I definitely put them as teachers in quotes, mm. uh, in certain respects, they certainly informed my experience. And I would say not of their doing, but mine, uh, that they were symbols that blocked the light of truth out of my mind, that obscured my vision, not because they were attempting to do that, but just because of how I held them in my mind. And so when the spirit really came in and was like, who's your daddy? <laughs> you know, it was like, Oh, who is my source? What is my source? And my father, particularly, they were both very strong figures. They both seem to have gotten out of here, but they're very present. Um, both very strong figures in different ways. And my father was a lawyer and very much had the kind of emperor archetype and the, you know, um, yeah, just a very strong personality, very much like driving his own ship. And um, and so he was a big authority figure and had a big opinion about himself as my father. And as I went through my journey with spirit, I found myself at times calling him Dave rather than dad, you know, mm -hmm. and you talked about, you know, this sort of idea of rebellion, Yuta, you know, there was maybe a streak of that, but there was also this understanding, even as a kid, even though there was all that kind of authority figure confusion, um, I did have this sense of like, we're all, we're all the same here. How come, you know, how come you get to boss me around or how come, you know, you are the opinion that's the important opinion, you know, it was sort of like spirit was already in my mind about those things. Um, but these relationship dynamics, you know, can get so muddied and confusing and they can be a place for me in my mind where I can use them as a crutch or can use them as an excuse or can use them as a reason to not be in my own brilliance or my own wisdom or my own knowing. And my father was a big symbol of that for me. And he was one of those healing relationships the spirit to really show me where I was defaulting into my littleness all over my life. And so, you know, this idea of throwing these kinds of figures into the fire, again, I had to do it in sacred ceremony. And I had to do it with a lot of spiritual support. 
uh, because that kind of dismantling in my mind and my psyche was painful. I love my father. I, my dad was like such a, an amazing symbol of support in so many ways and was a good friend, you know, in a lot of ways. And he did a lot of stuff, as I see it, that was really complicated and seemingly not helpful, right? But, you know, <laughs> I, I have love in my heart through everything. I mean, I could tell stories for days about things that are not so great, right? But I am have nothing but love and respect for him and gratitude for him. Um, but boy, I, you know, he's passed nine years, I think, 10 years now, eight years, I don't know. And I'm still burning the fire with spirit over that symbol in my mind. And, you know, I think even in the course, I may have the language wrong, but it says, you know, drop this course, drop these teachings, come unto me holy, I don't know the language, unencumbered, like come and drop it all and come into the experience. Yeah, you with know, empty this was hands. the other with empty hands. Thank you. Whatever the, you know. I was having this whole idea of, and it's used in different ways, this idea of first principle. Like we want to be in the experience with spirit. I do. Maybe I shouldn't say we. I want to be in the experience. And the world of images is a world of idols. Mm -hmm. And they can come in the form of teachers. They can come in the form of seeming buildings, blah, 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 right? We, we know the drill. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's really for me, you know, when I connect with that idea of, well, what's the purpose, right? I mean, when I was doing it in this arena called shamanism, and I'm not attached to the teaching, I don't see myself as a shaman, like it's burned up. I'm just sharing it because it's useful potentially for somebody. And that's what spirit's telling me to do. So, you know, it's like in that arena, the purpose was to be in your divine alignment. You got to let these things go so that they can be retranslated so that they can be shown to you for the blessings that they are and for the way that the spirit can work with you to be in service. It kind of like gets bottom lined pretty simply, mm -hmm. but there's so much complication in the mind and, you know, mental and emotional charges around this stuff. So anyway, I'm still sitting with fire ceremony with my father, <laughs> my dad, you know, and, uh, and it's beautiful. And, and I love him. And I think that my throwing him in the fire in the end is helpful to him. You know, at the end of his life, I was caring for him and he was still, he's like on his deathbed. He's had a heart attack. He was in a coma, like all this really hard stuff happened in the story of Dave. And he was still treating me like I was a 12 year old that he had to like tell how to do everything, micromanaging me. I say that with all due respect, you know? That symbol was so strong. It took so much energy that diverted my attention from the spirit, trying to deal with the symbol of dad and the dynamics of dad. It took my attention from my purpose, from spirit, from what I was supposed to be doing in other areas of my life for spirit. So, you know, there's a fierceness that we have to have to be persistent on our path. We have to learn how to persevere. And sometimes that perseverance is to say to big figures in our lives, not going your way. I love you, but I'm here in a different call. I got a different program I got to run because this is what spirit's telling me. You know, standing up to these figures sometimes is an initiation that is really, really not only powerful, but it's vital. Have to do it. Amen. Yeah, I think that was one of the hardest things for me that kind of standing up, it seemed like there, you know, there was a there was a, a moment where I needed to actually stand firm, stand my ground with someone who'd seemingly been my teacher before, and someone that I trusted and do trust, <laughs> and you know, someone that, that had been guiding me and really helping me in terms of getting clear on, you know, specific things. And um, yeah, there was, there was a time and it did feel like a very initiatory experience. 
Um, so I love that you are bringing that word in because it did really feel like that. It was like, I had a choice. I had this, uh, this reflection in front of me that was very strong in terms of what they were saying to me. And they were bringing a certainty and a seeming clarity towards me. And yet there I was, and I was feeling the complete opposite. <laughs> and with the same person previously years before that I was in the exact same place and it was the most confusing moment for me at, at that time because it was the same thing again like there was this very strong certainty coming towards me through this symbol of this person and I totally caved and tried to line up with where they were coming from and it actually wasn't working at all um, and it left me really confused and I think it left them confused as well so having having you know I always like thinking about healing in terms of a spiral versus a circular thing and it's like you hit um the certain spot on the spiral you know at one level and then you know if it's not fully healed yet you come back around at a higher level on the spiral to the certain you know the same spot so years later again I'm in the same position with the same exact person and I did what felt right in the moment which was actually to stick to almost like stick to my guns you know which feels a bit um almost like I'm in a fight but it really wasn't that but you know I was really being called to trust what I was feeling and it didn't feel right what was coming at me and so I just I, like almost like I repeated just what I was feeling in the moment and the reflection of this person completely changed and they were totally okay with the whole thing and but for me like there was there was it was it was hot like I was you know my heart's beating and it was it was this kind of initiatory like I'm walking through the fire by doing this because you know I could lose massively if I sort of keep my ground here so I thought you know I I could lose this connection I could lose this friend I could lose this um you know mighty companion and it ended up just with me just saying exactly what I felt and the whole scenario just turned into clarity like I was meant to bring a clarity from within myself and yeah so yeah just loving that initiatory sort of feeling of the whole thing and thanks for bringing that in because it is it's a it's a it is initiatory when you for the first time when you when you encounter this experience where you you have to bring a clarity in a situation where maybe previously you wouldn't have been the one <laughs> to do so because of certain relationship dynamics or you know whatever it may be uh, or you know simply just wanting to be in a place of trusting another person that is trustworthy and that has been, you know, walking alongside you, but seemingly maybe a little bit ahead of you. You know, we um, have these stories of initiation in many of the cultures. Um, and I was led to a gentleman who was the spiritual elder for his tribe. He was a West African. And in their way of being, they're in ceremony 24-7. It's what they do. And in his culture, you know, when a man comes to or a young boy, 12 or whatever, 13 years old, they go through massive, massive initiations, like stuff that we can't even comprehend. Because there's an understanding that we have to engage our inner forces. There's an understanding that we have to be up to the task of a really fierce experience for awakening. You know, it's a scary process facing the mind. And it requires 
a power much greater than anything on this human realm to be given its place center stage within our minds. And so, you know, I found his stories to be really helpful, you know, to show me what spirit had been doing. A lot of us don't get ceremony at 12 years old. You know, those are symbols of initiations that are really important. And so many of us, instead of, you know, getting a big fire ceremony at 12 years old, you know, maybe we go and find cigarettes or a bottle of booze, you know, to, to answer the call that we have within <laughs> that spirit saying, hey, it's going to be time to like wake up and really like come to life, right? And instead of, again, the fire, we go looking for it out in the world somewhere, you know? So these, these ideas uh, that are there in many cultures that are really geared towards like, forget about, yeah, your community is important. Your parents are important, reverence, gratitude, respect, all that great. And top dog is the divine. You know, we've lost that in a lot of cultures. And I very much feel spirit talking to me in my own mind about that kind of thing all the time. You know, it's things are not as they appear to be here. And so, you know, we have to be constantly, constantly stripped, die daily, let go. And um, it's been vital. And, and, you know, here I am with you and whoever's joining in, stripping it some more. You know, it's not a once and done rinse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's not, it's not a one and done thing. This is definitely a daily, um, a daily process. And yeah, I like, um, you know, you talking about these kind of initiatory um, experiences that a lot of cultures go through that seem like maybe they're missing a little bit um, in uh, modern life as it is now. And it's like we have to kind of um, almost make make our own initiations nowadays and um, also, you know, really be attentive to when the spirit needs us and wants us to go through these sort of fire ceremonies like you say um that are so so helpful on this path and yeah just hearing these stories is so helpful and it's always cool to um see these kind of other perspectives from this sort of culture that you're talking about um and yeah i know you know i've talked about this many times um david hofmeister seemed like he was um one of the sort of most important teachers that's uh crossed my path and his big thing is, is stories and talking um talking about um, experiences he's had with uh the spirit in his own life and um stories of him being in the channel with the spirit for other people and it's so helpful to hear these stories and yeah it's it's a comforting right to hear um other people's experiences so yeah i'm glad we got to talk about this kind of sensitive topic um that it can be for some people and i think you know the spirit is always just encouraging us to understand that it's okay that uh, sometimes things can feel um, uncomfortable and and yeah sort of the symbol uh, of coming to a place where it feels like we need to put our teachings into the fire the stuff that we've found so helpful along the path put them into the fire or yeah symbolically put put these teachers into the fire it's it's a process that I think all of us will have to face at some point because we do want to just be stripped completely clean of all of it so that we can be this clear channel for the spirit and let all things be just really clean and in the moment so yeah thank you for joining me in this topic elizabeth and um thank you to everybody who's joined us with it by listening 
we're grateful that you're here and we'll see you next time. Lots of love. Bye.